Wow, how far do you have to sink for your pro wrestling fix to actually be a named person like Sean Ross Sapp and have to watch YouTube and Tamina and deal with all us people? Hello, folks. Welcome back for I am the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. And wow, this was an interesting Raw. Not really, but the fact... And as you saw in the thumbnail, Sean Ross Sapp was having, um, like, internet issues or something. Or he was having TV issues. And he had to stream Raw tonight. He found Tamiya on YouTube. And whoa, did we give him the business or what? Thank you, guys. But most importantly, I do have some thank yous to give out. I think we were talking about Ricochet. And I put out a little thumbnail that's, that said, I wish I was Prince Puma again. And a couple of people actually responded to me. So again, if you respond to me, I shall always respond to you. Because Mr. Nevermind. Thank you, sir. Yep, you remember... Lucha Underground 2. We all miss it. Oh, I have some news about that. But you, sir, won twice with that six count. I was the table. Again, you remember Prince Puma just like I remember Prince Puma. You, sir, are definitely a master of the air drums. <laughs>
The cat's kind of taking her nap back there. JJSB. Yes, sir. You're chilling out to Lucha Underground, listening to it on your briefcase boombox. And then, let's see here. I'm going to get my hand ready. Dread Shaskum. I know. Yeah, Dread. No, I'm sorry. Dread Sean. You, sir, can crawl out of here for lack of knowledge. The Lucha Underground. And now it's time with all that thank you. you again a little news and notes oh wait what did i want to say oh yeah sean ross Sapp was watching along with us all the poor hoboic plebes in the peanut gallery beach ball mania section of the world he was watching youtube with us so that was pretty entertaining um, there was some news, but I forget what it was now. Shoot. Um, oh, yes, that's right. Vampiro is now doing a talk show on the El Rey Network. I think it was two years ago last August where he and Matt Stryker had their most <laughs> infamous screw-ups for triple mania he was cursing on air he was farting on air he demanded his music he was yelling at producers producers were talking to him and it was all caught live so if that's how vampiro does his shows i almost want to see his talk show on the el rey network so if, again, if he has that hobo studio quality, in fact, my hobo studio quality is a lot better than what they did. But it was so bad, it was just funny. Again, actually, in about a little more than one month, it's Triple Mania season. You never know what's going to happen, especially with all this coronavirus stuff. Um... I think in an official statement, WWE does not want to do anything in front of crowds until, I think, August 1st. So there's still plans for SummerSlam in the works. AEW, I think, might be having live crowds, depending on stuff. Um, Mid-August. And then, again, depends on stuff. Because even here in Daytona Beach, if you're out in public, it's a mandatory mask thing. Wow. I have to get my mask. I'm not allowed that mask at work. I don't know where that. I want to see how people react to El Vagabundo. No one will fight in the store with the dread, with the most powerful El Vagabundo. But that's a whole other issue, though. So, with all that stuff taken care of, let's get to some raw action. Uh, starts off with a super contract signing. I guess they didn't want to break it up to two segments, so they just did put everyone in the ring. And, of course, you know, a melee ensues and chaos ensues. Uh, Dolph and Drew for their contract. And Asuka and Sasha with Bailey and Sasha's side with their contract. It breaks down. Um, Drew tries to kick Dolph. Asuka fights both Sasha and Bailey. We'll get to their match a little bit later. And that, and that sets up then, holla, 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 play. A mixed tag match. Uh, main event tonight is going to be Asuka and Drew McIntyre taking on Dolph and Sasha Banks. Dolph is quite the ladies' man, isn't he? Scuzzball. Um, oh, yeah, he was also sporting a, a pride wristband. Scuzzball. 
That's okay. So after that, Big Show comes out. He calls out Randy Orton. Andrade, Zelina Vega, and Angel Garza show up. And then, woo! Rick, Sheriff, Rick Flair shows up as well. Again, um, he says, no, Big Show, you don't want to deal with that. He leaves. Andrade and Garza get beat up by the Viking Raiders for our first match of the evening. It was Andrade and Angel Garza taking on the Viking Raiders. And wow, this is pretty good. The Viking Raiders take early control. Ivar takes his beard, runs his fingers through it, and then just stuffs it in the face of poor Angel Garza, who had to wrestle with pants on for most of the match. Um, that was, whoa. Not good. And then, of course, poor Angel Garza just gets beat up. Uh, Ivar tags in Eric. Eric then body slams Ivar onto Angel Garza. He gets a beating. Andrade gets a blind tag. They're teasing an Angel Garza and Andrade breakup because these two are on the same page. Andrade made the blind tag. Um, Garza kind of lost only half his pants in the whole thing. But then they start to argue. And Zelina Vega has to go back, and she has to tell the boys what's up. Uh, she's a voice of reason. And Andrade comes back begrudgingly. Uh, Garza and Andrade again makes a blind tag. And Garza's like, whatever, dude. Uh, Eric, again, he fights out of the one corner. He tags Ivar. Ivar hits the seed senton. Ivar was caught by a low drop kick. That's never a good sign because you always want to get the big man off their feet. Eric eventually gets a tag. He eats a spinning back elbow from Andrade. And then Garza hits the the wing clipper. Surprisingly enough. El hilo. Los ingobernales de WWA. Win. I'll tell you what, it was a fun enough match. I do like the tease. I think the thing is, this can this match could actually build to extreme rules. This was a good. This was a fun. This was a fun match. Though. I mean, I don't see these four ever having a bad match. It's a surf and turf match. Oh, well, the other thing I wanted to say earlier. Because, I'll, I'll get to it, but isn't it early for them to have a mixed tag match? The, the heels, heel champions, or the face champions versus the heels? Generally, that's not in the go-home show. So, I was kind of confused by this. The whole flow of the show seemed wonky. And I don't know if it's Bruce Pritchard or Quentin Tarantino taking control of stuff. But it just seemed... It wasn't bad. It just seemed off a little bit. No, oh, it could also just just be me, my sleep deprivation. Uh, and then we have a Liv Morgan recap, and then the Iconic confront Ruby Riot. Uh, of course, Ruby Riot says, "Well, when I pin you, it will be." She's like, "Oh, don't say it." But she said it. Heidi Lovelace said it. She said, "Iconic." That's fun. It's good to see Ruby Wright have fun. Hope her and Matt Cross are very happy together. Even though I still remember her as Heidi Lovelace. Yeah, Heidi Lovelace. Um, so after that was Akira Tozawa taking on R-Truth for the 24-7 champion. This was a quick match. It was a headlock. Um, R-Truth faked a knee injury, then turned into a quick roll-up. Meh. He could have done without this match. He could have... It was a match, though. The ninjas tried to, to beat him. I'll give it a can of soup, only because it was a match. Then Arch, yeah, and then we had MVP and Bobby Lashley talking in the back. Give him credit. Uh, Seth Rollins starts to talk about stuff. Uh, he does a promo, then, then uh, Rey Mysterio comes on the big screen along with Dominic. It'll be good to see Dominic in the ring, I think. He has potential. He has 
at a young age, the size. I mean, he is a mentor for everything. Ray Mysterio could probably teach him so much. Like, he'll probably open so many doors. Probably, WWE probably shouldn't be the first stop for Dominic. NXT might be a little too high. He needs to get rid of some greenness. Granted, Ray Mysterio is his father. I'm sure somewhere in their backyard they have a wrestling ring, like like the Hardy compound. A lot of wrestlers actually do either made or have their own wrestling ring in their backyard. Johnny Mundo has one in his backyard. The Hardys have one in theirs. Um, oh, who else? So, oh, what's his face? Bruno San Martino had a ring in his backyard. Because that's how he found Larry Zabisco goofing around in it. Few other wrestlers actually have their own ring in their backyard. That would be cool, though. Um, so we get Murphy, Murphy, and Seth Rollins. I'm just so done with this gimmick. It's it's not even fun anymore. Taking on Aleister Black and Alberto Carrillo. Delegas. Uh, Aleister Black, again, gets caught. The striking tries to be a little bit too fancy. Gets caught on the top rope. Um, and then gets stuck in the heel corner for a while. Umberto eventually does get the hot tag. Those kicks by Umberto are really crisp. I could understand somewhat Randy Orton's thigh slapping because it was loud. And it's obvious others, Jen, have actually caught on that really quickly and it gets old unless you hide it really well or if it's not done that often i think one time they actually used to have like a little heel clicker in, in their shoes that kind of made that noise too then they just said you know what it's just awkward because you have to kind of bounce around that it's just either easier for the slice slap meh it is what it is. Uh, so Umberto gets a hot tag. Those kicks are great, though. Uh, he goes the middle rope cross body, and then he does a flying drop kick. But no six one nine though. But but he does hit the pump kick on, and it sends Seth Rollins out of the ring. I'll tell you what, there was he does that walking. So so here's the corner, and there's the ropes. Umberto. The skill enough to jump from second rope to top rope to opposite side to splash. That's amazing. I've been up to the top rope, folks. That's some scary stuff once you once you get past the second ropes. For Umberto to do that so smoothly and effortlessly, Umberto, you're the man. So he does that for a splash all, all the way to the crown, too. So now you're not only going up, say, it's not six foot. You're not going up, say, five and a half feet. But then you have to try, like, you have to go down 11 feet. 11 feet's a pretty good distance, folks. I mean, that's nothing to, to be squeamish about, let's say that. Because you could look down 11 feet. It doesn't sound big until you get up to the 11 foot mark. And then you're like, oh my. Again, it's like going to like the community pool and you go into the diving section. And you realize 12 feet of water is actually pretty deep. So I know they recommend, I think if you have to jump into any unknown body of water, at least 15 feet. And that varies a little bit, but 15 feet's normally enough to stop you. That's pretty deep. I remember you to dive down. It, I mean, you could, you'd have to. When I was a kid, even going off the, the high jump, you'd have to jump in the pool and still swim down to hit the bottom of the 12 foot section. And by the time you came up, you were like gasping for breath because that's a, it's also. I think that's one of my natural fears 
Because I know all the time in the... In the third Assassin's Creed game, as you play as Ezio, when you have to break in as... What's his face? You have to climb up the crane. That always gets me. Like I think those extreme heights would get me. That and being like stuck in like really tight spots, I think, would freak me out. Though. So not not so much the high jump. Only because I know there's a pool at the bottom, but. And I've never done it because the line was always ridiculous. I don't even think they do that anymore because of coronavirus. But I don't know. See, I don't mind roller coasters though. But again, my feet. I think the thing is, as long as my feet are touching the ground and I have something to brace me, it's not bad. Like that, and like being like like going through caves and stuff, and like just barely squirming through. Oh, I see myself getting stuck and dying. So, I think those are my two things. Extreme heights, and I'll quantify that by saying heights well over 200 feet with nothing to hold on. So I would think the adrenaline would kick in, and I would hold on to something until, like, an arm got ripped off or something or the bar went through my elbow joint so i could see myself holding on to something as long as i could hold on to something and there is something under there's something solid under my feet that i can kind of shuffle on i'm good but if you had asked me to like climb a ladder on top of like a 200 foot building I'd probably be freaking out. Again, just kind of looking down and knowing that the only thing holding you up is this rickety ladder. That's normally not good. So again, I always give props to wrestlers that can do stuff off the top rope. Because when I did that, I'm like, gee, that looks like a long way down. I didn't do it the second time. I said, screw this. I'm going to the second rope. I'm going to drop the elbow from the second rope. Hot, heart style. I'm not doing a moonsault from the top rope. That's just freaky. Um, and then, so... Officer Black eventually made his own comeback. Uh, Murphy did get nailed with a 619. <laughs> that was good. Uh, Rollins, it's time for him to dive. And there was a Chichi Nando kick by Buddy Murphy. That's so good to see. We haven't seen that in a while. I think Impact used to do that all the time, and it was kind of one of their memes. We haven't seen that in WWE so much, which was pretty good. Uh, um, uh, let's see, then there was near Doomsday Knee, as, as Murph set him up. Near, near Doomsday Knee device, that was actually pretty interesting. Umberto, again, a near roll up. Gets, <laughs> near the roll up into the stomp. Alistair just. Yep, and then after that. I don't know, that didn't happen yet. Yeah, it was a near roll up. Into the stomp. Uh, Murphy and Seth Rollins win the match. However, afterwards, Alistair Black gets beat up. Um, Umberto again gets nailed by the steps because he tried to save his buddy. Uh, again, he was forced to wear the Rey Mysterio purple mask that Seth Rollins has. Black saved him a little bit. Umberto. Did eat a curb stomp on the steps while wearing the mask. Overall, this was actually a pretty fun match. Another surf and turf match. Wait a second. I see a pattern developing. Good match. Bad match. Good match. Indeed. Then there was a little Undertaker promo. And then Lana. Oh, Lana. How Lana stays in that dress is beyond me. But actually, she's not as voluptuous as you would actually think her to be. 
because I think I saw her when she was had the chiro, that extreme chiropractor visitor. I was I'll tell you what I'm not letting a chiropractor take a mallet and freaking round it off chisel to any part of my body. I don't care how badly aligned and how torn out of place a lot of things are because I, I know something's wrong because every I'll tell you what I don't know what I did. I lean on my elbow and I can hear it. I'm like, that's not a good sound. I mean, it's not even a pop. Because something will pop. Okay, I know what that is. But I... The hell was that? The... My body is just... I think as you get older, your body makes weird noises too. And it's not... It's just weird. Lana's pretty hot looking. They're going to do some... Bruce Pitcher's going to do something stupid with her. I can feel it. It was, it was Lana and Liv. I just want to see him kiss. I just want to see Liv Morgan. Oh no, it was Alana and Ruby Wright. I'm sorry. They did a uh, recap of that. So it was Lana and Ruby Wright. I just want to see Liv and Ruby Wright kiss and make up. I'll be happy with that. And we had Peyton Royce of the Iconics taking on Ruby Wright. And this is actually pretty quick. Those kicks by Peyton Royce. Whoa. I'll tell you what. I don't know what it is, but Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, they have a pair of lungs in, on them. I don't know who's louder in the sack. I can see Billy being a screamer and Peyton's right up there. And then uh, Peyton also had those flying kicks, uh, spinning brain buster. Ruby Wright got like virtually nothing in. I'll tell you what, some cameraman's very dirty. Or Kevin... Dun, 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 dun. I'll tell you what. He enjoys those crotch shots. He must have a ticker. There's one, two, three. Let's see, last time we got seven in. Four. Another one. Five. Six. We only got six. Uh-oh. We'll see what happens. Uh, again, this was a quick match. Did absolutely nothing for Ruby Riot. Yeah, it's a big show tonight. It's a big show. Uh, he takes on both Angel Garza and Andrade. Um, I'll tell you what. They had it, it take them a long time, um, Angel and Andrade, to figure out who's going to go. I'll tell you what. I don't want to be either one of those two. Oh, I'll tell you what. At the end of this match, in Vegas, titties hurt. Because, oh, those chops. <laughs> That's a big hand. And that reverberated. They did not need a live mic. And then Zelina Vega's reaction was amazing. She was like, even her, her face told the story. And the headbutts by the big show, again, people over seven feet tall should always do headbutts. And Andre the Giant used to do them. They looked amazing. The big show doesn't. They just look that much more vicious. So Angel Garza was the first. And then guess what? It was Andrade's turn to eat some chops. Um, and then, of course, Andrade went to go tag out to Angel Garza so he could get seconds. And I was like, no, you want it in, you stay in. And again, it took Zelina Vegas sweet talking to get them back together working as a team. Uh, and then was, Angel Garza was smart. He began to go after the knees of the big show, hit a, hit a basement drop down the knees. Uh, leg kicks to the knees, which is always smart. Andrade then figured, hey, he's worked over the big show enough, tags himself in. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, Andrade eats, a ch eats, a, eats the, uh, the, the knockout punch, a choke slam. He gets pinned for his efforts. Big show wins. That was okay. It's a ham sandwich of a match. And then Ricochet Apo and uh, Apollo and Cedric are all in the back. Our truth, he says he has to look out for ninjas. Yeah, whatever. And then we have MVP taking on Apollo Cruz. Again, classic match starts off headlock into rope running. Again, I don't mind the headlock. I don't mind wrestles as long as they lead to something. Um, again, put a person in a headlock to get out of it up, off the ropes, to do some good rope running, do some moves in between, have a lot of good chain wrestling off the headlock, and it works. You're supposed to sit there and say, headlock mania, 
or Rust Hold Mania. It's just boring. At least if you're going to put the headlock on, put it on to use. Actually make it mean something in the match. It's not saying, oh, well, hey, I'm gas, headlock me. Hey, I'm blown up, headlock me for a few seconds. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. But this made sense. Then, then I'll tell you what, the only awkward thing is Apollo Crews looks like he didn't stretch out enough. Or they did too many tapings because Apollo Crews' muscles got blown up. Because he barely got a hurricanrana. Because I'll tell you what, that Apollo Crews looked like he fell on his head when he did that hurricanrana. And then he could barely get MVP, who was not a small guy either. Barely off his shoulders in the gorilla press position. I'm like, oh, this is going to be ugly pretty quick. Um, so yeah, that was not good. And then and he goes to the outside MVP again, uh, eventually starts to maul Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews has a, has a decent spine buster, not the best, but he goes up to the top rope. Again, be very careful. You go to the top rope, Lashley distracts him. MVP bounces off that rope, crotches Apollo Crews and MVP won with a fisherman suplex. The perfect plex still can win a match or two. I still don't never worked for Curtis Axel though. I mean his father, Kurt Hennig, Mr. Perfect, perfected the perfect plex, the fisherman suplex. His own son can't use it to win a match. It's terrible. But MVP can somehow. Um so MVP wins. I think this was a non-title match, but might lead up to a title match at the pay-per-view. They'll probably do more. I don't know, junk promos. There's a lot of weird stuff. It's like it. The show had a go home feel, but three weeks out. Mm. Again, if you check out the title, you'll know that. Um, then Bobby Lashley comes in, locks in the half Nelson, refuses to let go. Ricochet and Cedric come in. Cedric eventually kicks Lashley in the back of the head. Ricochet does the same thing. He lets go. And then we have our next match, and this match, again, those two moves that seemed really wonky, it was a ham sandwich of a match. And then we had Bobby Lashley take on Ricochet. I'll tell you what, Ricochet wishes he was Prince Puma. Again, C title. Um... Ricochet, he just got beat up and then he got tossed all over the place, feels and just like heaved places like a human lawn dart. He was just getting beat up. Um, Cedric, uh, Cedric tries to interfere, but he's like, no, nope, no, nope, that's okay. I don't want any of this. Backed up a little bit, then ouch, into the post again. Well, Lashley went in because Lashley picked Ricochet up in his shoulders, rammed them head first into the post. He said, yeah, I don't want to win by count out. I would win by count out. Uh, he goes in to break up the count, break up the 10 count. I can still do that every so often. Uh, get back in the ring. Poor Ricochet can't even stand. Bobby, Bobby Lashley goes to spear him. He has a good looking spear too. He almost has like the, the nearly no jackhammer needed spear. But Rick Shea couldn't even stand. Bobby Lashley just looms over him. Um, eventually he tried to, to, they went to the outside again. Uh, Bobby Lashley, well, Bobby Lashley got low bridge. They go to the outside. Rick Shea jumped on him. He got caught by Bobby Lashley. But this time Rick Shea was smart. He, he, he pushed Bobby Lashley into the post. Lashley posted himself back in the ring. The Asahi moon salt, oh, the prettiest of all moon salt. And if I had any coordination, I would love to try to pull off an Asahi moon salt one day. I know I would do it. I would go on the go on that second rope, fall right in the back of my head, and it would not be pretty. Um, Cedric eventually just takes takes out MVP. MVP tries to be a distraction. Cedric takes him off. Alashi does a catch power bomb. Eventually puts on the full Nelson and Ricochet. Ricochet has to tap out. That was... <laughs> that ouch. Oh! I don't know if it... I don't know if Bobby Lashley was had an earring. Because I know he has a little cauliflower. Or if his ears were just kind of roughed up from, from his past. But it looks like either 
Lashley got an earring ripped out or part of his cauliflower ear kind of burst off a kick. Because he was bleeding a quick splatter on his chest from his ear. To me, it looks like one of those things if he was wearing an earring, if Ricochet kicked him in the ear or kicked him behind the neck, I mean, it's perfectly plausible that the laces caught the earring, ripped the, ripped the earring out of the ear, said causing ear to bleed. It's not the first time I've seen it happen. It's one of those things. It bleeds so much. But because it's the ear and, and there's, I mean, there's nerves and stuff in there, but there's, it's not like your fingertips. It, it, it's hard to say. You don't really feel it. Like when I stepped on that tack, or actually I stepped on my watch and the little metal prong went through my foot. I felt it. It felt like a good, I could hear the, I could hear the, and I could feel it pierce. It felt literally more like a pinch. But then when I pulled it out, all this blood started to come out. I'm like, the hell did I do to myself? And the ear is the same way. If, if you have an earring in and, and you get it ripped off, it bleeds. It doesn't really. I mean, it hurts, but it's not pain. It hurts, but it's not truly painful. It's not debilitating. You can live with it. But it bleeds, though. Again, if you pop the cauliflower part of the ear, you explode someone's ear, it hurts. But actually, it relieves a lot of pressure. But that, they have to do surgery and stuff. It, it gets ugly. But but again, it just bled, baby. Um, and backstage, Dolph. Dolph admits he doesn't watch wrestling. Boo, Dolph Ziggler. He's back there with Sasha and Bailey. They make fun of him a little bit for not watching wrestling. You know, he is a professional wrestler. It's hot. Oh, wait. Uh, the last three Ricochet match? That was good. It was a cheeseburger match. Then let's see her. My cat's. Oh, she wanted to go eat. I thought I heard her move around. I saw her in the video. Then the main event of the evening. You have Drew McIntyre and the Empress of Claymore County, Asuka, taking on Dolph Ziggler and Sasha Bosch. I mean, Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks was actually pretty good in this. Um, Drew starts off Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. Drew's too strong for the single leg attempt. Again, I do appreciate when Dolph does collegiate wrestling moves. I appreciate any professional wrestler that does collegiate, professor, does collegiate wrestling moves. Thumbs up to Dolph Ziggler for that. Too strong. Literally just picks him up. Show a pile driver. That would be awesome. Even if it was like a tombstone pile driver so to his knees. I, that would be pretty cool though. Uh, Dolph did the famouser. Got the famouser on Drew. Not even a one count. Like you showed his pitch like, oh, oh, he kicked out already. Not even a one count. Uh, then Asuka and Sasha got in. Asuka, the rope running by Asuka is utterly amazing. Um, she didn't miss the hip tech, though. Uh, Sasha Banks. Try for the bank statement. Got reversed to an Asuka lock. Um, the men get back in. There was a reverse Alabama slam attempt into the roll-up. So Drew McIntyre tried the reverse Alabama slam on Dolph. Dolph rolled him up for his effort. Tagged in Sasha. Sasha. Whoa. She has to be careful. She ate some knees. A drop kick, which looks amazing. The hip attack. The shining wizard. The German suplex. She took a lot. Um, Sasha, however, did dodge the hip attack. Gets the upper hand on Asuka for a little bit. She stretched. Asuka out a little bit on the outs uh, when they went to the outside a little bit. Uh, Bailey definitely distracted Asuka. Asuka got dropped to the apron. Ate the meteor. That was amazing looking though. Again, show many. I guess he had to make up for the last thing, but they had to put in like 20 more crotch shots between Asuka and 
Sasha. Sasha's trunks aren't conducive to external like boy shorts. And Asuka's just Asuka just looks amazing. Um, and Drew eventually gets tossed in, tosses off around some more. Um, Asuka tries for a roll up, gets reversed into a bang stream. Then there's that weird reversal of the Asuka lock. Where Asuka had Sasha Banks in the Asuka lock. Asuka kind of flipped back, pinned Asuka with her own thing. Dolphin Sasha Banks wins. Grant, granted, neither of these two are winning anything. So this was their, their go-home moment. This is actually really fun. This is another surf and turf match. Overall, I'd have to call it a cheeseburger raw. Again, it just seemed really weird. It just seemed that we're... It, it had a go-home show feel, but there's still, like, three more weeks. Like, it's not until the 18th. Yeah, so let's see. There's going to be... Well, two, at least two more shows. Again, three weeks away. Oh, my phone went off. But again, it, it just... It felt like a go-home show, but yet, you know, it's like, well, wait, we still have two more Raws and three more SmackDowns to go. Why the tea so early? So it was just kind of weird like that. So again, thank you, Sean Ross Sapp, for joining us all, the WooTube creatures, on, on Tamiya. Thank you. That was definitely our privilege and pleasure. <laughs> and I'd like to thank everyone else for watching. Um, as far as the rest of the week tomorrow, I hope to get home pretty quickly. I do have to do my grocery shopping tomorrow. So again, tomorrow's going to be a live stream. Impact Wrestling Wednesday is a review of a... Oh, it's going to be the night one of Fighter Fest. That should be interesting. So I'm going to have some pizza. I'm going to relax, enjoy myself for a change. Pizza and some booze. Can't hurt. Thursday, I'm off. Friday. Well, Thursday, I'm kind of off. I have to start doing stuff. I might do that Tuesday or Wednesday. Might start that Wednesday for a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. Friday's going to be SmackDown. And then Saturday, the 4th of July. We're going to have the 4th of July Mania coming live.